Hi guys and welcome to this, my video on negative indices and what a video it's going to be filled with heartache and tragedy. Yes, mine, not yours, hopefully. More on that in just a moment. But my name's Darren Maths Guru. Thank you very much for joining me. Do me a favor. Can you subscribe? It's one little box to tick for you. And it, all it does is tell me that people are watching. I'm tired of my mother telling me that she doesn't understand any of the work. She is my one subscriber. You could be number two. Please subscribe and tell your mates. Hopefully you'll find all of the content amusing and um, it'll actually help you with your maths. What are we dealing with today? Well, we're building on the topic we've done previously, but guys, we're going to understand what a negative index is and actually what it means. We're going to remember how to, what a reciprocal is and how to express a negative index as a positive index by taking its reciprocal. What on earth is that all about? Well, on the screen at the moment, I like doing a bit of a recap, just in case you've been watching the videos. And we dealt with five rules. All right, we've dealt with the most important rules, but there are always more that we don't formally call rules. And one of them is about manipulating negative indices. All right, we have seen in a previous video that if we did x to the power of 5 divided by x to the power of 7, if we follow our index rules, what actually happens? You subtract them, and that became x to the power of minus 2. But what does that actually mean? Well, again, that's the point of this video. And here's the tragedy of my life. So in year nine, I had a maths teacher, Mrs. Hurst. Oh my goodness, the only teacher in my whole school career who made any sense to me whatsoever. And because of that, I think I got a little bit of a crush on that lady. Yes, I know, it's quite unpleasant, isn't it? I'm quite old now, and I'm talking about being 13 years of age in a school in the United Kingdom, and, and this lady was quite old. Um, well, she wasn't old. She was a lot older than I was, about 15 years. But anyway. She left me. Well, she left the school. I was heartbroken. Then on, I had a completely different maths teacher and uh, therapy, really. But what did Mrs. Hurst teach me? She taught me that a minus sign basically becomes a one over. That one hand signal, she literally went, a minus sign is a one over. And I'm like, well, what's a one over? And that's basically a reciprocal. Now, if you understood anything about maths, when we take a reciprocal, so if I had, for example, the reciprocal of a half, we take the bottom and we flip it. What was the bottom becomes the top, what was the top becomes the bottom. So that would become two over one. That would be the reciprocal. Maybe not put the equal sign there, that would put an arrow, a reciprocal. Two thirds would become three on two. You literally take what's on the bottom and you put it on the top. So we've done that with fractions. And she was like, well, if you have x to the power of minus two, well, at the moment, that's on the top of a fraction. Yeah, because anything can be written as a fraction if we divide it by one. And she went, take the minus sign and reciprocate it. Or if it's on the top, move it on the bottom and ditch the negative sign. If it's on the bottom, move it to the top, ditch the negative sign. Whoa! So basically, x to the minus two is exactly the same as one on x squared. My mind was blown. Now you're going to turn around and say, why is it one on? Well, in front of this x squared is a 1. That number actually stays there. It's only this x to the power of minus 2 that moves down. So if I had 2x to the power of minus 3, for example, what happens? The minus sign says move it. If it's on the top, move it to the bottom. All right, we can do that. So there's my fraction. That's what it really is. I'm going to leave the 2 where it is. And I'm going to move the x to the power of minus 3 below. So I get rid of the minus sign and the floaty 3 goes below. And realistically speaking, that's it. That's exactly what we do every single time. So let's actually look at that one more time. I've given you the shortcut. Let's just work it through just so that you are aware and it makes the video a lot longer. No, I don't want it to be longer. I really don't want it to be longer. So again, if we had here x to the floaty 4 divided by x to the floaty 6 and we subtract those, we get x to the minus 2. We know that, yes? But if we did it longhand, as I've said here, if we did it longhand, we'd have x times x times x times x, divided by x times x times x times x times x times x, which would give me, as I've said here, 1 on x squared. Well, they actually have to be the same. They've got to be the same, yeah? And so, Mrs. Hurst was effectively saying, where it was a negative on the top of the fraction, I've moved it to the bottom of the fraction and just allowed it to be positive. And in maths, we can actually use, uh, what's the official term there? 
Express the following in terms of positive indices. Express the following in terms of positive indices. Thank you, Barry. It just means turn the negative into a positive. So we've noticed now that we can take that negative power and turn it into a positive. So, and again, lots of examples here. As I've already said, x to the minus 3 becomes 1 on x cubed. x to the minus 10 becomes 1 on x to the floaty 10. If you don't believe me, just look at what I've done. I've made that po negative power there a positive power by moving it from the numerator to the denominator. And I'm sure you're going to try and say, well, is that the only way I can do it? No, you don't. You can move it. I'm rushing myself. Also, what do you notice here? If I had b to the minus 3, c to the minus 2, you take each of those and you turn them, you move them, right? So I can now write that as 1 on b to the floaty 3, c to the floaty 2. Remember, these were both on the numerator of a fraction. Again, any whole number can be divided by 1. So, so long as you keep that there, I don't see how you can make a mistake with these questions. Here we go. So what's now going to happen here? What do I say by Mrs. Hurst logics? What's going to happen? Well, it's a negative sign on the bottom of a fraction. I don't want it on the bottom of the fraction. I don't want it negative. So what am I going to do? I'll move it to the top. Absolutely. The 1 on x to the minus 2. This 1 was already there. Leave it there. And I'm now going to times it. I'm going to move that x to the minus 2 up to become x squared. So in which case, my answer simply becomes x squared. The minus 2 on the bottom moves to the top, becomes a plus 2. Few more examples, let's see what we've got. 1 on b to the power of minus 3. Well, we've already got the 1 there, leave that on the top. b to the minus 3, move from the bottom, move it up to the top, ditch the minus sign. 1 times b cubed is simply b cubed. Whoa, we can do this. I bet you've already finished the exercise now, haven't you? I mean, you probably like switched me off and gone and made a cup of tea. Right, 1 over y to the minus 10. Well, the 1 stays there, the y to the minus 10 becomes... And 1 times that becomes y to the floaty 10. Here we go. We've got a trick here. Well, the top one there is a squared. The bottom one is b to the minus 3. Do I need to move the a squared? Uh, uh, uh. No, why? Because it's a positive power. We like positive power. We like positive people. Anyway, so the a squared stays there. The b to the minus 3 was on the bottom of the fraction. Move it up to the numerator or simply just times it by the a squared. You guys are like, what? this isn't difficult, is it? No, it's not difficult at all. Now, we like formulas in maths, and so let's just write this as the idea that if we have a to the minus m, the floaty minus m, that's exactly the same as 1 on a to the m. Again, all I'm writing in maths language is the fact that we just move it from the numerator to the denominator. Yeah? And if I have a to the floaty m, that's the same as 1 on a to the minus m. And again, all I'm doing here is saying, well, I can move that bit there up on top of a uh, fraction, catching. All right, other examples express the following with positive integers only, indices only. All right, so what do we do? We got 3, a to the minus 2, b to the floaty 4. Well, the only one of those has a negative power. And where is it at the moment? It's on my numerator. And where am I going to move it? My denominator. Yep, now again, remember, all the positive ones, and 3 is a positive power, and b to the power of 4 stays exactly where it is. It's only the a to the minus 2 that moves underneath, and we ditch the minus sign. I move it, it's gone. There we go. So we could almost say, if you move it, you move it. Uh, yeah, anyway, I'll leave that one there. All right, what about this one there? Only look for the negative powers. If it's on the denominator, move it up, likewise. So is the 5 negative? No, nope, leave that one there. Is x to the floaty 3 negative? Leave that one there. Is the y to the minus 4? It is, so I'm going to write that as y to the floaty 4. Now obviously that looks a little bit weird, so I'm going to reformat it just so it looks a little bit nicer. And I can't see how any of this is going to get any more complicated. Right, express the following using positive powers and then evaluate. Now what does evaluate mean? Evaluate. It means write down the value. Yeah, so we're going to write them as a positive power first and then we're going to evaluate them. So let's look at 3 to the float minus floaty 4 first. Well, that's the same as that as a fraction now. The minus 4 is on the numerator. Move it to the denominator. So that becomes 1 on 
three to the floaty four. Now again, a lot of people turn around and just go, oh, well, I'll leave the three where it is. No, 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 that minus floaty four belongs to the three. It all moves under, right? Don't get confused. I know we normally deal with letters like x to the minus four, but numbers are things too. So having written it as a positive index, because it has, we now want to evaluate it. So that's going to become one over three times three times three times three, right? Three times three times three times three. Well, three threes are nine. Three threes are nine times those together, 81. There is nothing wrong in maths in writing little side calculations. No one in the world has said you've got to do it in your head all the time. You can write it down, yeah? And don't use a calculator. Come on, come on, come on. What about this one here? So we've got five on three to the minus floaty two. Hmm, that's in the wrong place. We don't want that there. So I've got to write it as a positive power first. The five was already there. Now again, lots of people make mistakes now by writing three squared. And in an exam, if you were to see that, you might suddenly go, oh my goodness, that's 53 squared. Well, it isn't because there is a little times between that. And we have to be very careful when we're doing index notation to put some of those times in, particularly when it might get confusing. All right, let's evaluate that. That becomes five times three squared is three times three, which is nine. Nine times five is 45. I have written it as a positive power and then I've evaluated it. Oh, can we do the next one? I think we can. Two thirds to the minus four. Now we're gonna go back to one of our index laws before. And if you remember, anything inside a bracket that's raised to a power gets raised to that power. So here that becomes two to the minus four on three to the minus four. Well, hold on a moment, they're both negative powers. So that means the top's gonna to move to the bottom and the bottom's gonna to move to the top, absolutely. So three to the floaty four divided by two to the floaty four. They actually just swap places. Well, we already know that three to the floaty four is 81 from the previous question. Two to the floaty four is two times two times two times two. Well, two twos are four, four fours are 16. And there we go. Does anything go into 81 and 16? I don't think it does. Now, there was another way to do this question, and there will probably be people screaming at me going, you can do it another way. Well, you can, yes, because two thirds to the minus four. That minus sign is the one that says flip things. Now, when it's outside the bracket, I can actually flip everything inside the bracket with that minus sign. So that actually is the same as three on two all to the power of four, which becomes three to the power of four on two to the power of four. And do you notice? Three to the power of four on two to the power of four, three to the power of four on two to the power of four. Now that's just a little bit further on. But remember, the minus sign reciprocates things, it flips things. And when it's outside a set of brackets, particularly with a fraction, we can reciprocate it inside. All right, evaluate without using a calculator. So writing it bigger, because I've got really bad eyesight now and my studio lights are shining on my iPad. I've got to do something about that. Three to the power of minus five. Here we go. So we've got powers of powers, and this is where our index laws come in again. Powers of powers, make sure that it's, so we're gonna times the powers together. So three to the power of minus six, divided by three to the power of minus five. How are we gonna do this one? Well, you can do it the way we did it previously. Let's do that first. So the minus will flip the thing. So the three to the minus five moves up to become three to the five. Three to the minus six moves down to become three to the six. And can we now do this? Absolutely, we got five of them on the top. So that's all gonna cancel out to become one. And five of those threes on the bottom is gonna cancel to become power of one. And so we get one on three. And there we go, we have evaluated it. Another way of doing it is we know that we could rewrite this as three to the minus six divided by three to the minus five. And what do you do when you divide? You subtract the powers. And again, a lot of people make silly mistakes here because we now have minus six minus minus five. If I'm subtracting those powers, we've got minus six minus minus five. So that's gonna become a plus. Minus six plus five gives me minus one. So three to the power of minus one. And again, we should now know that that becomes one on three. Now, I'm not trying to say that these are all simple. They get a little bit more tricky. But the great thing is you just practice, practice, and practice, and you will be guns at this, I promise. 
And there we go, that's the end of the video for this particular topic. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you found it useful. My name's Darren, please subscribe, please tell your mates, and hopefully I'll see you in another video. You take care, guys. Bye-bye.